for all my days. I can affect you. Only Oh, 
before the King and worship. It's an honor, Lord, to worship before your throne. Begin to tell your Father sweet words. Worship Him in your own understanding. I worship and adore you, God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus.
this is the 11th month of the year a lot of people started with oars but they're nowhere by now but God has kept us even in our unfaithfulness he's faithful we've been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus because the righteousness of a man is like a filthy rag before him so he has given us someone that is worthy of our Lord Jesus Christ wherever you are lift up your hands and give him the glory for the great things he has done for the contracts that you were expecting oh somebody give him the glory But 
to trust and obey. The Bible says trust and obey. For there's no other way. You say But to trust, but to trust.
Wow. Elohim. 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 Indeed, mighty God. With due respect, you have your seats in his presence. Wow. Today is uh, another wonderful Sunday morning. And uh, we, we are here, as usual, to appreciate him for what he has done. We can't do his work. He does his works. He only needs us to represent him in the physical. So, as it is in heaven, so is he on earth. The service has commenced in heaven. That's why I'm here. When you see me coming out late, according to your time, don't blame me. God's time is the best. If I decide to appear here in my own time and moment, nothing will happen. Because he that does the work is invisible. But by grace, we make his works visible. So thank you very much for understanding that. Without taking much time, we are going to dwell on a brief message titled, The Relationship Between Our Heart and Prayer. The reason why God wants me to take up this message is because each time I'm at the prayer line, the moment I say, can I speak to you? This, 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 this. Some of you will just put your finger across and be looking. And God gives us the grace to see beyond appearance. I'll be looking at some of you saying, ah, this small boy, how come he's able to see beyond the physical? Who gave him power, by the way? By what authority is he operating? Ah. We knew of his master, of course. His master was, his master was then. But now he has ascended to meet the sense of heaven. How come? This small boy, this small boy, look at his appearance. Look at the way he looks. Look at the kind of clothes he's putting on. Hmm. One that shall never end. <laughs> That's the thought of many hearts. And through this message, you understand that this body can do nothing without the propeller, the engineer, the driving force, God Almighty himself. So all glory belongs to him. <clears throat> so we're going to talk briefly about the relationship between your heart and prayer. And before I go into that message, I would like to take you to, to some books. And I will be reading these books as the message progresses. The first book is the book of Psalm 34. I will take my reading from verses 12 to 14. I will also look at the book of Romans chapter 9 verse 1. And I'll also look at the book of John chapter 6, verse 63. The book of Romans chapter 8, verses 26 to 27. John chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. John chapter 4, verses 20, verse 24, precisely. John chapter 4, verse 24. And finally, same John chapter 15, verses 3 to 5. So I will be picking this reading as the message progresses. Remember the message, the relationship between our heart and prayer. Through this message, you will know the meaning of heart and also the meaning of prayer. So let me quickly take you to the book of Psalm 34. 
Psalm 34, verses 12 to 14. I read, Whoever of you loves life and desire to see many good days, Whoever of you loves life and desires to see many good days, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. Verse 14. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Now let me take you to Romans. Romans 8, verses 26 to 27. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people according in accordance with the will of God. In accordance with the will of God. When you take a critical look at the book of Psalm 34 from verses 12 to 14, and that Romans chapter 8, verses 26 to 27, you agree with me that two major things were emphasized, our heart and prayer. This is teaching, not preaching. Teaching as it's inspired by the Holy Spirit. Listen attentively. So that you know when you are praying. And you also know when you are saying words. When you are talking to yourself. After shouting, Lord, do it, do it. Woo, woo, ha, me, do it. When it is time to pray, some people see it as a time to gym or do exercise. As their custom tells, tells them. Lord, do it, do it, do it, do it. Ooh, ooh, ah, hey, hey, busy, hey, busy, ah. After busy, busy, the headache is still there. You go for Panadol. <laughs> There's a difference between saying words and praying prayer. I'm going to define our heart. And also define prayer before we go deep. I wouldn't take you deeper. Because if I go deeper, you may not understand. Because the question is, how many of us are one year old in the spirit? How many of us here are still wearing spiritual diapers? You know the level of a baby when napkin is still around the waist. That is the stage where the baby doesn't do what to do. When it is time to poo poo or wee wee, it's on the body. So to avoid, to avoid messing up your bed or your parlor or your sitting room or your cushion chair or what have you, you have to put on the napkin or diapers. How many of us are still wearing spiritual diapers? How many of us are a year old or two years old or even a month old? In the things of the spirit. Many of us today, 60 years, 50 years, 45, 60, 70. Have you taken time to ask God to show you your real self in the spirit? When you see that you are yet to be born, perhaps they are still pregnant of you, you will know how to behave in the physical. All those titles you are giving to yourself, you'll be very humble about it. But today, Many perish because of lack of spiritual knowledge. Listen attentively. I will talk about prayer, our heart, and prayer. Just a brief message before we go into today's activity as God has in store for us. Now, our heart. Right, right. Take your note. Take a, take a note. Our heart. Is our real self talking? Is 
is our spirit man. Our spirit being that communicates, interacts, or relates with God Almighty Himself, a supreme being occupying a supernatural place, environment, or atmosphere full of glory, honor, praise, adoration, power, and authority, and majesty. Our hearts which is our spirit being relates with God Almighty, interacts with God Almighty, communicates with God Almighty in groans that cannot be expressed with ordinary words or utterances. In simple definition, our heart is the communication point or contact for the Holy Spirit. You know your heart now. When you say your heart, it's not the one that pumps blood. When they dissect you, open you, you see the heart that pumping, that's not your heart. The Bible describes the heart as a real self, your real self. As you are sitting down there, it's your heart that relates with God. Not the one that pumps blood. Your spirit being is what we're talking about. Now, prayer. Prayer is a spiritual matter. That is meant to be done spiritually by a spiritually minded person. When we pray according to the will of God for our lives, we are offering spirit prayer, which is prayer in the power of the Holy Ghost. It means we are worshiping God who is a spirit being in spirit and in truth. In a simple sentence, prayer simply defined is a relationship that exists between God Almighty and his children who worship him in spirit and in truth. When we are praying according to the will of God, we are offering spirit prayer. In other words, we are worshiping God in spirit, in spirit, and in truth. That is why the Bible says, if it, if it is not in faith, it is not in truth. If it is not in truth, then it is not in spirit. And if it is not in spirit, it is all nothing. The question you need to ask yourself is, we pray with God's word. What is the position of God's word in our prayer? That's the question you're supposed to ask yourself. Because sometimes we pray. We don't know that you don't give yourself word to pray with. The Holy Spirit inspires you 
on what to pray for. And when you are praying according to the will of God, you are praying as it is given to you by divine providence. It means whatever you say shall be said in heaven because you are not the one speaking. But the Spirit of God dwelling in your heart propelled you to speak out the word that is mixed with the Spirit of God. And that is why those who speak that word that is mixed with the Spirit of God realize Jesus Christ's power on the scene instantly. Instantly. Are you saying that my name of Jesus Christ be healed? That word be healed comes from your innermost being, your spirit man, to act on behalf of Jesus. So therefore, Jesus wouldn't allow his word to come back to him void. It must accomplish the purpose it was sent for through you as a vessel unto honor who has made him or herself available for God to use in prayer. What is the position of God's word in prayer? Turn with me to the book of John. John chapter 1. Verse 1, 2, 3. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. Also, let's quickly turn to the book of uh, John chapter 15, verses 3 to 5. Are you there? You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. You are already delivered because of the word I have spoken to you. You are already healed because of the word I have spoken to you. You are already saved because of the word I have spoken to you. Who is speaking and whose word is at work? That's the question you're going to ask yourself before you go into prayer. Who is speaking? And whose word is at work at that moment? You can't speak your word and have results from Jesus. It's impossible. I repeat, verse 3. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. There is what we call prayer fruits. Prayer fruits only proceed from spirit prayer. Be healed and healing takes place. That is prayer fruits. Be delivered and deliverance takes place. That is prayer fruits. You can't have healing when you speak of yourself. Can you see why you have to be very careful when it is time to pray? You can't just wake up in the morning and say, Lord, bless me. Lord, heal me. Lord, you know. No, 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 no. no. There are things you must do. There are things you must do to create an atmosphere of Holy Ghost around you. I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Verse 5. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. What's the Bible saying there? Remember, I asked you a question. What is the position of God's word in prayer? Listen. Christ Jesus and his word are one. The two are inseparable. They are 
interrelated, interwoven, joined together in such a manner that it becomes extremely difficult to differentiate between Jesus Christ and his word. When you speak the word, Jesus is there. Each time you mention the word of Jesus Christ, Jesus is the one you're talking about. Jesus Christ and his word are one. That is why the Bible says, when we take the word of Jesus Christ to our heart, take note. And truly make it part of us by meditation. It would, by its very nature, change us. And when it does, you will find yourself, we will find ourselves acting with God in both the word and life. Now, prayer becomes very effective when our heart is spiritually strong, active, and alert. I mean, when the thoughts and the desires of our hearts are spiritual. The question you need to ask yourself is, how would the thoughts and the desires of my heart become spiritual. There comes pure meditation. Pure meditation. I don't mean ordinary meditation. I don't mean just meditation. Pure meditation. Pure meditation can only be found in God. Remember, there are other meditations. Those who are of the other world, they say, okay, I want to go on abstract travel. They will go on their knees, they meditate, whatever foolish thing they want to say, they are gone. But in our own case, as Christians, we engage in pure meditation. Tell your neighbor, pure meditation is different from just meditation. Pure meditation is the meditation in God's word alone. Nothing else. Because meditation in God's word is a visit with him. It's a dialogue with him. It's a communion with him to act on our behalf according to the state of our heart. According to the state of our heart. The question now is, what is the position of faith in prayer? We are coming. We are coming. Now faith. Faith is the, the, the body that carries everything. Now, position of faith in prayer. Let me quickly take you to the book of Romans. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10, verses 8 to 10. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the message concerning faith that we proclaim. Verse 9. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord... And believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Verse 10. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. What is the position of faith in prayer? Listen. Listen. 
Faith is built in us. When our heart is ruled, governed, and dominated by the words of Jesus Christ. When your heart is ruled, governed, and dominated by the words of Jesus Christ, you constantly speak that word in prayer over your situation. And that situation must listen. Why? Because faith is at work. Faith exists therein. That is why the Bible says that what we speak with our mouth and believe in our heart becomes a visible reality in this natural world as we constantly hold fast to our confession of faith. What is confession of faith then? Confession of faith in our heart, through our mouth, is the confession of absolute trust in God Almighty. Absolute confidence in God Almighty. And strong belief that He will move that mountain on our behalf. That he will grant us our heart desires according to his will and purpose for our lives. According to his glorious riches. Glorious riches in Christ Jesus our Lord. There are three things to be considered when we are determined to pray to our Father who art in heaven and at the same time resident in our hearts. Can you imagine how wonderful God is? He's there in heaven and also occupying your heart. Wow. What a wonderful God we serve. Listen. There are three things, three things to be considered when you are determined to pray to our Father who art in heaven and at the same time, resident in our hearts. Number one, the thoughts of your mind. The thoughts of your mind before prayer must agree with the principles that governs God's authority and power before you can talk of praying. What are you thinking at the moment? What is your mindset? Are you thinking of fleshly desires in your heart right now? Then forget about prayer. Don't waste your time. Or are you fine-tuning your heart in conformity with the principle of Jesus? Congratulations. Your heart desire will soon happen in time. There are three things to be considered when you are determined to pray to the Father who art in heaven and at the same time resident in your heart. Number two, the desires of your heart. The desires of your heart must agree with the desires of God and the reason why God desires them. Whatever you are praying for or you want to pray for must be something God says you can ask for it and it will be done for you. Show me in the Bible where Jesus Christ say you should hate your enemy and pray against them. Come and show me in the Bible. 
Show me in the Bible where it is written. That you must go to which doctor to kill your neighbor. Come and show me where Jesus preached about that. This is our standard. The Bible is our standard. The desire of your heart must agree with the desire of Jesus Christ in the scripture before you can pray effectively. It means before you kneel down to pray, change your words and your thoughts to conform with the principle of the Bible as stated by Jesus Christ. Otherwise, you are wasting your time. Can't you see the reason why you pray and pray, the problem still remains? Can't you see the reason why after you finish praying, nightmare, you finish praying, Lord, I want to sleep. Cover me with your precious blood. Cover me with your precious blood. I want to go to bed. Cover me with your precious blood. Hey, Lord. Oh, Lord, you speak in tongues. Amen. And you carry your holy Bible, put under your pillow. You are snoring. Satan will just come. Pa, pa, pa. <laughs> he said, oh God, how are you? <laughs> he will help you to remove that Bible, drop it on the floor. Flog it, it, be, it be. Because the word is not registered in your heart. It's not dominating your spirit. It's not resident in your heart. You cannot produce prayer fruits. That is why when they attack you, you say, in Jesus' name. And they will fall and scatter. You say, hey, Ogamio, my honey, my wife, my husband, hey, my family. You cannot remember the name Jesus because it's not registered in your heart. But he that pray according to the principle of Jesus Christ, the moment they come, not that they will not come to attack you, they will come, but the next thing that will come to your heart is Jesus Christ from your heart. From your mouth, Jesus will come immediately because you are confessing him in spirit and in truth. Can you see that prayer is not something you just, you just dabble into? You woke up in the morning, you just, hey, Lord, bless me. Lord, hey, hey. Ah, you start doing exercise. Say you are praying. No. Prayer has approach, divine approach. There are three things to be considered when you are determined to pray to the Father in heaven who is at the same time resident in your heart. Number three, the feelings in your spirit. The moment you want to pray, how do you feel? Do you feel that the atmosphere has changed? That is why before you pray, God inhabits the praises of his beloved one. You praise God from your heart. After you must have tell God, that you're a sinner, acknowledging that you're a rubbish person before him, not claiming right. You worship him, worship him, worship him, worship him. The time will come, you feel in your spirit that you're no longer alone in the room. <laughs> the moment you feel in your spirit, you're no longer alone. Wow. You change your confession. Lord, it's already here. I can feel his presence. He's already here. All you need to do is to open up your heart. God is already here. That's why you see some people when they are praising God. Lord, praise him. When they start praising God, they just change their mood immediately. They have felt the presence. They have felt the presence of Jehovah, Elohim, in their environment. They will change their confession immediately. If your feeling is not in accordance with the presence of God and you are praying, you are inviting Satan instead of God. Now, let me land. Prayer is not a thing to be rushed into or instituted carnally as culture entails today. I'm taught that anytime I want to pray, I must need, I must put one knee on the floor and raise one leg. I start praying. What if, you, if God says you should stand and pray? Is it a crime? When your heart is dominated and ruled by the words of Jesus Christ, when it is time to pray, 
there will be spirit suggestion in your heart. There will be spirit intimation in your heart telling you what to pray for and how to pray for it. Telling you when to stop praying because what you are praying for is unchangeable. Telling you when to stop asking and start praising God because in the moment what you are asking for will come. It takes spirit suggestion from the heart that is pure. Ruled, governed, and dominated by God Almighty Himself. May the Lord bless His words. Elohim, you see.